I want to start this video by saying if you are affiliated with the political party mentioned in the title and you click to hear the argument, I wanted to thank you and say I respect that. It's not easy hearing a conflicting opinion to one's own. As a means of staying unbiased though, I am working on a Republican conservative video, so if you've got a counterpoint, I'm going to ask that you save it just in case I mention it for later. Without any further interruptions, let's get into this. Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Today we are looking at a bit of a political social movement, the gun control debate. I have a few counterpoints that I see and I'm going to research them, but I want to make this known that it is simply how I feel the liberal side of the coin just isn't getting what is being talked about. So sit back, relax, and let's kick it off with the basics. So from what I've observed, there are about five main counterpoints of the gun debate that liberals love to mention. Drone strike statistics and facts, the armed disarm police paradox over aggression in Australia. <laughs> Right away, the most popular anti-gun comment from those on the Democratic side of the spectrum is that, oh, you've got a gun? Well, the military has drones, so what makes you think you stand a chance? Yeah, sure. Ironclad argument if the government was trying to exterminate its own people. However, it isn't. In a police state, when we're only the police, the government has guns, but the civilians don't, then the civilians are taxed to pay for the government. Yes, they need compliance from the people, and that would require them to take the guns, but they wouldn't drone strike one civilian. Not only would that potentially kill too many civilians that are following the rules and might make them mad enough to fight back, but it's also expensive. Like, really expensive. Forces on the ground as in people win wars and keep order. Tanks, drones, and other military equipment is just too expensive and unnecessary to take an individual's guns. Unless everyone has them. And if you don't know who has a gun and you can't really establish order and the people just keep shooting back but they hide amongst innocent civilians and creates a hell where you can't tell enemy from civilian and you just can't strike everyone... Sound familiar? It should. Because it's what the Viet Cong did to us. Proof that civilians with the will to do so can fight back even the US military with just some bombs, guns, and knowing the land better. <laughs> Get your facts straight, point blank. You gotta be right on this. This isn't about the gun law thing, but most are about people's mentality and guns themselves. If you want a ban, which I don't recommend you advocate for, then all you're gonna do is create more armed and dangerous criminals. There are a few reasons as to this. One, if you make guns illegal, then anyone who owns a gun is a criminal, period. A civil unrest will rise because the police and the government have all the power, causing riots and violence out of fear of being taken prisoner in one's own country. Don't fall into this debate fumble. The Holocaust didn't happen because of gun control. There were years of systemic integration into the policies and minds of people. Literally, Hitler controlled the media, the government, everything. Rarely anyone thought it was bad because everyone was talking about how good it was for the people. There is some truth. After World War I, German has limited sales of purchases of firearms with permits, registration, and application for new firearm purchases. They kept a record, but it was only enforced for some new purchases, none old. In 1938, they loosened their restrictions for the citizens except for one group, the Jews, who weren't allowed to own even a knife. With the government, the courts, the media, and the people on his side, Hitler led the Nazi party into the path of global conquest, until they were stopped by the good old U.S. of A. Gun laws weren't an issue when German non-Jewish citizens could just buy a gun when they wanted as long as they had a hunting license and a permit. When it comes to guns, you are just getting minor things wrong about their specs for no reason and what they're designed for, but it speaks volumes to conservatives. This is the easy fix. Just stop lying about guns. I'm going to say that you are being influenced by the media because as I watch mainstream outlets like Fox News and CNN, I realize it's just you repeating false information that you believe is true. You have to do your own research. The more educated you are as an individual, the more you as a group can discuss guns with conservatives. But you don't seem to understand guns. I mean, look at this. Yeah, this is why conservatives aren't listening to you. Shoot a gun, learn about them, learn their history, and maybe conservatives will listen to what you have to say. Maybe. I can't guarantee that. Police girl, hey, hey police. So, do we arm the police or do we disarm them? This is a conflict in your own party. Every party has a conflict, but this is conflicting to the point it's clouding your logic. Simple as that. I can't say I understand it because I don't know where you stand. Do we let the cops, who some of you call horrible racist pigs, keep the guns? Or do we let them keep the guns but take it away from civilians? If you're an advocate for Black Lives Matter, this might be, judging from social media, a hard decision for you since black people can't have guns now making them open to the evil police, which would make you mad. Case 1. If someone who was black had a gun, they would be shot immediately, probably because they're illegal, which would make you mad. Case 2. If they didn't have a gun, then cops could just shoot them, which would make you mad. Case 3. If cops didn't have a gun, but someone pulled one on the cops and they were killed, would you be happy? If so, we have other things to worry about. But the backlash would give cops something else to protect themselves, which would make you mad. Case 4. No one is armed, and it takes numerous cops to take down one suspect, which drives up taxes, which hurts everyone, which would make everyone mad. If you said they needed more training, I completely agree, no problems with it. But I haven't heard that being proposed yet. If it hasn't been, that's my mistake. 
This one is simple. You all are pushing too hard. You have to give people time to adjust. How fast do you go with it? I don't know. But trying to push it this fast makes everyone see you as... Well, they see you as a communist trying to disarm the populace. I'm not saying that's how everyone sees it, but enough do, and that's all that matters. And this leads me to my final point, Australia. And other countries that don't have armed citizens that aren't, you know, basically holding them hostage. So, stop comparing America to these countries. It worked for them, and that's fantastic, but they have different people, a different history, and quite frankly, they have a different circumstance. America has a history of keeping citizens armed to fend off a hostile government. You aren't going to just erase that. I'm not saying to stop trying. Keep going. But I'm just pointing out what you're doing wrong in the argument. You have to be more gentle with it. And yes, I know, be more gentle to conservatives is a not trust me. I got that in the conservative criticism. But Australia didn't even do it as pushy as you're trying to do it. They grandfathered it in. To prep you, conservatives will fire back with the crime spike after the gun law changed in Australia, to which some of the situations technically apply to America already. Like in Australia. If you aren't absolutely sure your life is in danger, you cannot legally shoot and kill somebody. Same in America. In fact, these states all don't have a stand your ground law. Meaning, let's say someone breaks into your house in these states and you kill them. You are now at fault and can be charged. So, let conservatives know this nicely. I can't stress that enough. Be nice about it. Don't be a dick. And also remember to never call Australia's gun law a gun ban, when it's just heavier restrictions since you can still own a firearm in Australia. You just have to apply for the license just to own it, and you must give the government a valid reason to own it. Self-defense isn't one of them. If I get enough questions about it, I'll probably do a video on Australia's gun laws, since they're actually pretty confusing and misquoted often. Alrighty guys, even if you didn't agree with me, I appreciate you guys staying for the full time, and I thank you all so much for your time here today. Remember to leave a like and subscribe for more, and I will see you all next time. Peace.